Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. Rory Chop, Karen Huger upsets Gazelle Bryant with hurtful event timing. One thing about RHOP is that it never fails to bring the drama. Season 9 is starting off strong with new beef between Karen Huger and Gazelle Bryant over two events that were going on at the same time. Based on the context of the situation, this incident might cause an end to their friendship, which was already hanging on by a thread. Read on to find out what happened. It all started in the second episode of Season 9, when Gazelle Bryant and Ashley Darby, also known as GNA, told the girls that they were throwing an event. In addition to spotlighting their joint apparel line, the event was also going to be a nod to Gazelle's father, Curtis Graves. He died last year, and this was going to be a nod to him and his legacy. After hearing Bryant discuss the details behind the occasion, Karen decided to invite the girls to another event, which just so happened to start at the same time. Huger was suddenly expected to accept an award, and she wanted her co-stars to be there. The group initially called Darby to give her the heads up that they chose to go to Karen's award show first. Because of the DC traffic, they initially predicted that they wouldn't even get to the GNA event until 8.30, even though it ended at 9. When Ashley relayed the message to Gazelle, she was fuming. Bryant began calling the girls rude and snapped that if they couldn't show up at a respectable time, that they shouldn't come at all. Ultimately, only a few of the cast members were able to make it to the GNA spectacle in time. But by that moment, Bryant already felt betrayed not only by them, but also by Karen. This isn't the first time that Gazelle and Karen have been at odds. Every so often, they seem to be becoming close friends, but most of the time, they are total enemies. No fan could ever forget the season 3 moment when Karen decided to bring the ex-wife of Bryant's now-former boyfriend on camera. Likewise, Jaws dropped in the same season 9 episode of the two-event fiasco, when Gazelle poked fun at Huger's recent DUI, when Karen announced that she was receiving an award. Bryant joked that it had to be for driving into a tree, referencing her co-star's drunken damage. Needless to say, this double event disaster is just the icing on the cake to years of a rivalry between the two housewives. Right after the season 9 episode 2 premiere, viewers rushed to social media to share their reactions to the battle of events. Unanimously people agreed that the entire incident was the result of huger not being understanding of the gravity of Gazelle's event. In a Reddit thread, fans shared their disappointment for Karen's insensitive behavior. Here are a few of the comments. Karen was purposely vague and knew the time. I could never be friends with her. It's the no accountability for me. The grand dame herself, Karen Huger, had done it again, orchestrating a move so controversial that it left her frenemy, Gazelle Bryant, utterly speechless, something few could ever claim to have achieved. In the world of the Real Housewives of Potomac, drama was served as often as tea, but this time, it came with a gut punch of bad timing that no one saw coming. It all started on a sunny October afternoon when Karen decided to throw one of her lavish events. Known for her elegant taste and larger-than-life persona, Karen's parties were always a spectacle. There were rumors of a grand garden party she was planning but no one had any idea just how much her choice of date would rock the very foundation of the group. Gazelle, always keeping her ear to the ground, heard whispers about Karen's upcoming event. At first, she shrugged it off. After all, it wasn't unusual for Karen to make her own splashy moves. But then, the details began trickling in, the date, the guest list, and most damningly, the reason for the party. That's when Gazelle's blood started to boil. Karen had chosen a date that hit way too close to home for Gazelle. It wasn't just any regular day, it was the anniversary of Gazelle's divorce from Jomel Bryant, the man who had been a central figure in her life for so many years. The pain of their split still lingered like a ghost she couldn't shake, especially considering the messiness of their on-again, 
off-again relationship that had played out in the public eye. For Karen to throw a grandiose event on that date, it felt like a personal jab. Of course, Karen claimed it was purely coincidental, but Gazelle wasn't buying it. You mean to tell me, Gazelle said to Robin Dixon over lunch, that the grand dame, with all her planning and scheming, just happened to pick that day, please Robin, this woman doesn't do anything by accident. Robin nodded sympathetically. You know Karen loves a good stunt. But I don't know, maybe this time it really is just bad timing. Bad timing? Gazelle leaned back in her chair, fire in her eyes. It's shady as hell, and Karen knows it. The news spread quickly among the Potomac ladies, and soon enough, the entire group was buzzing with gossip. Some of the women, like Wendy Osifo, couldn't help but side with Gazelle. It's no secret that Karen and Gazelle have their issues, but this is next level, Wendy commented during a confessional. Karen might be the grand dame, but this time she's playing with fire. On the other hand, Candius Dillard Bassett, never one to shy away from stirring the pot, found the whole situation more amusing than offensive. Look, Karen's event is going to be over the top. Do I think she's being messy? Absolutely but I'm also not going to miss out on that champagne toast, just because of a little shade. As the date of the event drew closer, tension between Karen and Gazelle became palpable. Gazelle wasn't one to sit quietly when she felt slighted, and she certainly wasn't about to let Karen get away with this without addressing it head-on. A confrontation was inevitable. On the day of the event, Karen's estate was transformed into a wonderland of roses, chandeliers, and twinkling lights. It was the kind of scene you'd expect from the grand dame, a blend of old-world opulence and modern extravagance. The women arrived one by one, dressed in their finest attire, ready to see if this party would deliver more than just cocktails and small talk. Gazelle arrived fashionably late, her entrance making a statement before she even said a word. Clad in a sleek black gown, her eyes scanned the room as she sipped her champagne, her expression tight. The atmosphere buzzed with anticipation. Everyone knew the real event tonight wasn't the party itself, but the showdown between Gazelle and Karen. It didn't take long for the two women to come face to face. Karen, radiant in a glittering gold dress, greeted Gazelle with a smile that could only be described as mischievous. Gazelle, Darling, I'm so glad you could make it, she said, her voice dripping with fox sincerity. Gazelle smiled back, but there was no warmth behind it. Oh, you know I wouldn't miss this for the world, Karen. You always know how to throw a party. Karen tilted her head, feigning innocence. Of course, I wanted everyone to enjoy themselves today. It's a special day after all. Special for you, maybe, Gazelle said, her voice lowering. But for some of us, this day isn't exactly cause for celebration. The subtle day was lost on no one. The other women pretended to focus on their drinks, but their ears were fully tuned in to the unfolding drama. Karen raised an eyebrow. Oh, whatever do you mean, Gazelle? Surely you don't think I plan this event with anything other than joy in mind. Gazelle scoffed. Please, Karen, we both know what this is. You chose today on purpose you've never been able to resist taking a shot at me. Karen's expression hardened for a brief second before she let out a light laugh. Gazelle, you give yourself too much credit. Believe me, I'm not thinking about your personal life when I'm planning my events. The tension between them was thick enough to cut with a knife, and everyone could feel it. But this was Potomac and drama was never far behind. Gazelle took a step closer, her voice firm but controlled. I don't care what you say, Karen. Today was a deliberate choice, and it was hurtful. You may be the grand dame, but you're also petty. You've crossed a line. Karen's eyes flashed, but she kept her composure. Gazelle, if you feel that way, that's on you. I'm not responsible for your sensitivities. The exchange ended with Gazelle walking away, her head held high but the sting of Karen's words lingering in the air. As she left the party, the other women exchanged knowing glances. This feud wasn't over. It had only just begun. 
And in the world of Potomac, it was only a matter of time before the next chapter of their epic rivalry unfolded.